So we're talking about problem framing and uh, hopefully you're convinced that we need to spend enough time in this space because design thinking is after all about problem finding, not just problem solving. So spending enough time in the problem space is a really, really important thing. Uh, the question is now, well, okay, we're gonna frame the problem, how do we do it? And I use the term problem framing uh, over the term problem defining because for me when you talk about defining it's it's like you're taking this and you're narrowing the problem statement down to the one right answer and and that's too tight like there, there is no one right answer so uh, and, and people get uptight when they're doing this and they spend their time buffing and being perfect about it and you lose the flow you lose the looseness to it so I prefer to call, talk about framing partially because I'm an artist and if you're an artist you know that um, the way that you frame something determines the meaning of of the subject that you're painting or the subject that you're looking at so what does a frame do? So if you, if you put your hands up like this, uh, finger to thumb, and you form a frame, you can see that by looking through it, say maybe look at something on your desk, you can see that by looking through it, you can look at an object and then move your hands back and forth or left and right, and you will, you probably just get it also if I do this, like that could be my eye, that's my face, and you can see that while the subject doesn't change, the way that you see it does. And so none of those frames are wrong. It's always a question of which do you like the best or which is the most useful. So one of the things that uh, I start with with problem framing is say, do not narrow it down to the one right answer. Start off by keeping it loose and coming up with as many as you can, say at least 10 at least 10 ways of framing it and and play around with it so that you can feel your way around the problem space and remember that even when you've chosen one to work on when you go off and and come up with ideas or start prototyping and testing you're going to get more information which means you might need to come back and sanity check the way you framed it and possibly reframe it at that point which is fine so don't hold on to it now, the other thing with frames, so if you've got a frame again, to go back to our frame, is that what a frame does is essentially show you which bits you are focusing on or including and which bits of information you are excluding. So what are you focusing on and what are you leaving out? What's out of scope? And when you're looking at what you're focusing on, uh, a couple of things, a couple of tips for how to do that really well. One is, to focus on what you want to create. So not what you're trying to get rid of, but what you want to create. So look at an outcome. Uh, it's not that we want to stop people being so focused on their everyday jobs. It's we want to be, we want people to have the time to think about innovation on a daily basis or, you know, but flip it so that you've got your new reality coming on the outside. The second thing is, when you're looking at what you want to create, focus on the outcome and not on the output. So what do you want to create in the end? What's, the, what's your end state, not what's your way of getting there? So an example might be, um, how do we design, uh, instead of saying, how do we design a better business case? You might say, how do we design, or how do we come up with a way of tell a, a fast and efficient way of figuring out which projects to green light? So you're not focused on the artifact, you're focused on the end state. Or instead of saying, how do we ensure that our school gets better marks uh, on the standardized testing, you might say, well, how do we design the school so that it becomes a place where people throw, where the kids thrive on learning? So outcome, outcome, not output. Really, really important because most briefs that come in tend to create a solution that's already baked in. So, um, the way you frame a problem determines the outcome and the solution. Go for several, go for a number, kind of brainstorm how you do them, open because you're trying to open up the space to go problem finding, and focus very much on the outcome that you want to get uh, and the space that you want to create. 
Now, if you want more tips on problem framing, uh, on top of the, the standard process that you would go through, then please come and download my ebook, my new ebook called Stick It. Details are below, where I go through a number of design thinking tools and give you lots of tips and tricks so that even if you're a seasoned pro, you should be able to find something that enhances what you're already doing and, and lets you take it a step up. And I look forward to seeing you next time.